नमो तसे भगवतो अरे हातो संभासंबुद्धस नमो तसे भगवतो अरे हातो संभासंबुद्धस नमो तसे भगवतो अरे हाँ तो सम्हा संबुद्धस खाहीने माचाचित्तीने पमाधीने माया कतं अच्यं कमे मिबंधे बुरी पन्ये तथागते काहीने माचा चित्तीने पमादीने माया कतं अच्यं कमे मीदं मे संदित्तिक अखालिक काहीने माचा चित्तीने पमादीने माया कतं अच्यं Kamami sangha supati panne anuttere. Let us come into a comfortable position to start our practice for the day. Taking a deep breath in, seated comfortably. in a posture suitable. Guiding your attention across the senses to establish presence. Acknowledging the Sankhara the formations rising and ceasing. Quieting the mind. Using the senses, the objects that arise at these sense spaces to guide your attention towards this present moment. Letting go of the past. Letting go of any associations to the past. Letting go of the future. All that is yet to arrive. With letting go of the future, letting go of any interest in what happens next, establish present mind focus upon the present. And in this present moment, we might observe many things. Breaking down this image of free reality and allowing ourselves to go deeper. To a reality 
distant from hallucinations to a reality that is truly existent. Using the senses, the sensations as an anchor towards the present. Gently as you let go of the past, all that has arisen and passed, as you let go of the future, all that hasn't arisen and come into the present. What is of the now? The mind and the body. Coming into a state of deep peace. Gently, gently. Gently. Observing the sensation all across the body. Adverting to the body base to the present moment without any attachment be present be present Observing the sensation moment to moment as they arrive and pass. The pleasant sensations as pleasant. Noting the unpleasant sensations as unpleasant. Noting 
noting those sensations that are neither pleasant nor unpleasant. As equanimity or pekka. Observe closely. Be completely comfortable as you approach, discern moment to moment without any attachment observe observe Letting go word to the object with a three rooted mind Aloba Adosa Amoha. Alopa She's renunciation, letting go Adosa, loving kindness Amoha, wisdom, prajna Observe the sensation The rising and seizing sensations.
be in the present. Without any attachment, observe. Observing the arising and seizing moment 
of each sensation as they arise and cease in their own time. Observe closely. Observe.
as you observe the arising and ceasing sensation. Gently, gently, no, the impermanent. within each and every sensation that occurs through its moment of arising, processing and passing away. Observe. Observe. As you know, the impermanent. 
you may also begin to realize the nature of Sankhara Dukkha. The suffering of conditioned phenomena. Observe every moment how every arising causes a shift, a ripple, a change. Grappling for more sankhara to fuel this cycle of clinging and attachment. Observe. I remain untouched, simply observing the sensation moment to moment.
observe. How repeatedly in this cycle of arising and ceasing all Dhamma having arisen perishes During this moment, having been a condition, this Dhamma ceases to be a condition. This Dhamma is also causal for other Dhamma to arrive. Cause and effect. This understanding encouraging to let go deeper, more profoundly, in confidence of the practice, in seeing for yourself impermanent, suffering. non-self. Within this moment, observe, observe, observe.
gently recollecting the aspect of the meditation practice. Noting, noting, Gently guiding your attention Towards the senses, the sound, the environment. As you gently, gently. Sandu 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 All right, everyone. So, today's topic of discussion <clears throat> would be the Four Noble Truths. Now, the Four Noble Truths we know 
form the basis on which we continue our meditation practice. In the Four Noble Truths, the first two parts, suffering and the cause of suffering, is what we inherently observe in the practice. The Nirodha Satcha and the Samudhya Satcha are states that we aspire to reach because it is the ending, it is the experience of Nibbana. Whilst we observe suffering and the cause of suffering, we find that this suffering that we do observe in the sutras and in the Abhidhamma point towards a state where it is not connected to the praknyakti, the sammuti word. We know that the practice of vipassana is only possible when the ganasanya is broken. The ganasanya is broken. What is the breaking of the ganasanya? Now, if we are to take an object, let us say the object is <clears throat> a color, the color red. Now, when you would take a color, this red could mean a lot of things to you. The moment that this red is identified by the mind, the clinging has already occurred. Hence, we guide our attention through practice to see a position of that cognition where we do not identify a kyanne. When we hear something, we do not identify what type of sound it is, but we are alert upon the fact that it is a sound. The shabda, the varna, the rasa, the potab. In the practice of the Vedana Nupasana, we were alert on the potab, the touch, the vibrations, the sensations. Now these sensations, the moment that the sensation becomes a leg, a arm, a foot, a shoulder, a part of a body, now you have identified it not just as an object, but also as a part of your Panchupadana Kanda. The moment that it is the arm or the hand, we see this object in connection to an egocentric manner of identifying. This we cannot stop up until we get rid of avijja and tanha anusaya, which happens, of course, at a stage of arahathood. However, as aspirants, we come down to the basis of teachings that the Buddha has given us in the Dhamma Chaka Pavatara Sutra. The Yodas of Mansikara works in or can be shifted in this manner or should be shifted for one who wants to seek a deeper truth, which is, if you would remember, Ubo Ante, the two extremes. Hmm? Pursuing the two extremes is anario, huh? ignoble, poor, not worthy. But the pursuing of the path or pursuing of the Dhamma is then noble, worthy of respect, celebrated, and so on, isn't it? What this means to a practitioner is this. It is not just a gloating on of the Dhamma, but it is really laying the foundation to how we think as practitioners. 
if we hold on to the samoti the conventional world then what we are saying is or thinking or behaving is that ubuvante one part of that samuti is on the kama sevana which is kama kama loka kama avachara tithi kama vacharo why is it that the sphere that we live in is called the kama vachara bhumi because beings within this bhumi live in a particular manner what is that particular manner kami kamo avacharati thi kami thula avachara kara kara navata navata kami kerihi now because of our sinhalese background when we use the word kama we would um almost instantly be dragged to the raga element the lustful element but this is not so this thinking in this manner only shows to light only a part of our um hindrances when we look at the kama as the sense bases and the objects arising in these sense bases what we would find here is the ability of tanha to grapple or pull us towards sansara or some object of sansara tanha ve adaganama drushti through views api vadaganama now the views that we have mold the characters and people that we are <clears throat> the views that we have the belief systems that we follow when there is a view anything that goes against that view is going to cause suffering the view and the adherence to this view is going to also create the ego sakha ditti otherwise what do we refer to or how do we get rid of a view in understanding that it is exactly that it is not improving that this is that we, this view is right or that this view is wrong it is not in proving whether this view is scientifically backed or whether this view is not scientifically backed no when a truth is held by the mind it need not be a view for example the sun and its capabilities is not a view it is a reality it need not be a view because when there is a view then all the conditions attached to that view mold the future steps the next moment of your life there was a talk that now in aridhamma swami nuhan say before he passed away i think this was the last time that he addressed the galdu sangha sabha and if you are Uh, particularly aware of the yoga ashrama samstha in sri lanka uh, the it is at galdu that they do the ordinations and it is their headquarters there now in swamin van se address the congregation taking as topic and the congregation here is all monks all the sangha hmm? all the monks of the yoga ashrama samstha the topic was why a monk should not use a phone <laughs> why a monk should not use a phone right and and i thought i was at this sabha and i thought to myself well we are going to hear the same old thing again <laughs> <laughs> that phones are you know modern that it should not be so you know that whole that story the do not use your phone card 
So I thought, okay, assuming, you know, just as we stupid mundane human beings do, assuming, I assumed, okay, this is one, what Bhante might be going to tell us. But Bhante told us something that blew me away, <laughs> which was when you, when a monk has a phone <clears throat> and when the monk is texting or calling or making these arrangements, hmm? making these arrangements through this communication, these arrangements are made based on the future. These arrangements, I will do this for you next week. I will do this for you next month. Okay, let us meet up in a couple of days. Huh? There is a dana here, there is dana there. All of these things that we do over the phone, which is quite true, is regarding the future. I will text you later. I will call you back. So this monk, I mean, now in the sign here, this monk who should be in the present is now in, uh, inadvertently pushed to constantly advert upon the future. Thus, this breaks our practice of mindfulness. I mean, how? <laughs> now this I now sir. I thought that was such a beautifully put, because you would never assume. And that is entirely true, the fact that we constantly, in that way, live in the future. The Dhammapada Gata, Ubo Ante, means the mind knows, me, Siyallama, all of this that I am holding on to or that I can physically see is only for this time. Upon death or upon the continuation, what is important is not this cycle because this cycle happens again and again, is actually the realization of that cycle. Which the Buddha says in the same Dhamma, Dhamma Chaka Pavattana Sutra, what is the traveling upon the Eightfold Path is noble. Because it is only a noble person who can do it. If it comes to a position where you are faced with all the pleasures at your six sense doors, for a man, for a person to say no, to let go of that and to be in a state which is disciplined over the present knowing that this, there is nothing beyond this present, that is a noble act. For a person to look upon an image an image that is worthy of lust and to say no. For a person to look upon an image that is worthy of hate and to not have that reaction is noble. For a person to be in the midst of, let us say, people with different opinions of religion, beliefs, their personal enlightenment, and still be able to listen, learn, discern what the right path is, is that not noble? That is why the Buddha says in the Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutra, the person, the practitioner must, must know Ubo Ante. Hurting the body and going on crusades of hurting your life, thinking that that is going to bring you salvation. The other, Kama Sukhalikana, thinking that it is only in the pursuit of sensual pleasures or sensual stability. Sensual stability is a big thing in our world. Sensual stability, for example, a marriage is sensual stability. Your feelings for a portion, a great portion of your life, you have a sense of comfort. 
for a person to be in a place that secure, which is, it is really secure. A marriage is, can be quite secure, of course, if you do not, <laughs> if you're culturally newt, then it is easy. In that case, when that comfort is taken away, what kind of person can still be in a place of security? A person who is truly noble. A ekakot network. When a person we see in the karma loka, when you have a lot of things, you get respect, you get admiration, you get love and care. People are automatically very, very nice to you. They're very pleased with you. But we assume that this is the way. This is the way. But you see, when you are a disciplined, let us say, a great monk, a great monk has access not only to the resources of one person, but the resources of hundreds upon thousands of followers. Is that not far greater? But where does that power come from? Me kisivak nati handruanta oya shaktiya koin dinni. Ekya nimi chandi nata ni eva ki shaktiya gena nimi kata kana. Me atthama harayaktik jivatvena. Swami Nuhans kena kena gena kata kana. Odhukta e serapuakvat andin nati. A person who is not even wearing slippers. Or in that kind of life. Where does he get the confidence to stand par to par with these people who are flaunting their wealth and assets and power? It is through the knowing that all of this is only temporary. The only thing that is truly sustainable or will be there without change is Nibbana. My journey is not this. My journey is that. Owing to that shakti, that strength, we stand upon our path at this present moment. That is so important, everyone. I think that Dhamma Chakka Pavatthan Sutra quote then brings us to the knowing of this suffering. As we sit here in observation, we note Apeme Sankhar and all the formations that we have right at this moment. Even think about it, I am speaking, you are listening. As I speak, you have an inquisitive nature. You are curious, what is he trying to say? What is he trying to get at? That curiosity itself is constantly shifting, isn't it? That curiosity is constantly learning. There's change happening constantly, constantly, constantly. You think, ah, this is what he's going to say. And then you come to understand something else. Constant changing, constant changing, constant changing. Ah, presence is... Seeing that change for what it is, make it a kenama Pali willing from pa in, in Pali, they refer to this as Badana ba, Badana ba, Badana Lakkana Badana Lakkana Badana Kiana me Badawak Kilakian Singhala Basa Badawak a disturbance. Huh? This disturbance, what is his disturbance? Think about this. In, at this moment, at this present moment, with everything that is, if there is absolute peace, there is no badavak, no disturbance. But because the moment there is a condition that is built upon this, 
This condition, condition by other conditions, now a network of conditions tied to my piece, which means make, which means think of a scenario like um, in East Asia, um, the you know in places like Shanghai, these these buildings with so many flats, right? The they don't often have um, these um, um, bells. What they have is these sort of ropes with ropes they've tied to like aluminium cups or some sort of uh, um, canister like thing, where the postman or deliveries or Uber people who come will just tug on this rope and it'll ring. <laughs> Will they'll just start? You've seen this, I'm sure, right? They tug on this rope, and uh, they tie it on that as well, and they pull it up from that for ease. Because in these flats, there's not just one person in these tiny flats. You have ten, fifteen people living, right? Now imagine if it was not one rope per house, and there were so many ropes. Or there were so many bells as well. And every single second, someone is pulling the rope. What's going to happen? That is a state of our mind. That is a state of our unguarded mind. All the sankara, it's changing. Now, it might not be so... Uh, bad, it might not be on such a restless level, but moment to moment, what we see is shifting. When it shifts, this creates a new layer of curiosity. Now, we assume this curiosity just for the beautiful word that it is, curious, right? charismatic, all these words that we use, right? To, to identify, to comment on how a person is. But when you go deep into that curiosity, you find a sense of lack, a sense of something that is opposite of peace, trying to find peace, trying to find stability, trying to find the answer, trying to understand that trying, that ing that comes at the end of all of that doing is suffering. Why? It's constantly shifting. Hence, when the senses are not guarded, our purview shifts from one thing to another. Hence, in meditation, we guide our attention to one singular place. In this singular place, me kathavatek, with the story, it's difficult to be in this place. In letting go of the past, you let go of past tanha, past ditti, and past mana. In letting go of the future, you let go of future tanha, future ditti, future mana. <clears throat> For example, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I will make sure I do this tomorrow. Drushti. But then you would ask, how can I live without that? How can I live without that? When you take away the ditti, everything is not taken away. There is something which is left. What is left is a mind that can tolerate objects without being burdened. What kind of mind is that? That is a kusala mind. The reason that we feel burdened with the sankara that arises is because this sankara is being processed by the akusala chittas. That's the only reason. 
when an object is processed by the kusala chittas, this means that this object is cognized with nekam atari mai mai me arumana ganni nikam hitanna ahimsaka lamek sellam karana me ahimsaka lamayage sellam kirima dakala mawa ahimsaka satuta kati karaganna kusalaya barak neme eth e lamaya sellam karana dakala මෙන්න මේ ඕම නෙමේ සෙල්ලම් කරන්න ඕන මේමයි සෙල්ලම් කරන්න ඕන කියලා හිතෙන්නත් පුළුවන්. ඔතකොට දැන් අහිංසක ළමයා අකුසලයෙන් ගත්තේ. ආ කුසලයෙන් එන්නත් පුළුවන්. ඒ තර යම් කිසි ඩිස්ට්‍රස් එකක් එනවාද එතන තියෙනවා අකුසලයක්. එතන තියෙනවා මිකුද Why? Because kusala cannot create distress. Only a kusala. Otokota, me, during this moment, if we learn or train the mind upon the ground that not on a frame, not on a spectrum of the Samuti world, not to cater to needs of the Samuti world, but under the teachings of the Buddha and the guidance of the Buddha, ubo ante ignoba. Kamesu kamesu kallikan yogo hino gammo potujjaniko anaryo anatta samhito All ignoble. I mean, make vedak. I can vedak nahki ne ki inki ani. The pursuit of this. The pursuit of this. For that pursuit of this, it is like, for example, a very well educated person doesn't who's received accolades, who has been celebrated, doesn't need to show off their knowledge. A person who is truly powerful, quite much like the lion in the savanna, and the behavior of the lion, he is not bothered. If he is not interested, he is not bothered. Even if there is prey next to him, the lion will not get up. He is not bothered. He is the, that is why he is known as the king of the jungle, king of the savanna, because he in that demeanor. When the person is in that dhamma, in that same manner, e vidyata matana armanta king. Me avastave, when we look at that same suffering, moment to moment, we could see, we could observe, what is his suffering that I am seeing? And you see the suffering. Let us say you see the impermanent. When you see the impermanence, there are moments this reality is so shocking to us sometimes, in a good way, in a good way, that it enlightens the mind. You feel happy, you know. For example, people say everything is only there for a moment. After a moment, it all disappears. Mina me deva lapi daki not when we see these unfoldings insights. We arouse a sense of there is a sense of happiness that comes to mind, isn't it? A sense sense of shraddha arises. When the shraddha arises, one might think one might have such a deep sense of gratitude towards the fact of the dhamma, for the teachings of the Buddha, for the sangha who might have taught you, for this practice entirely. You might have all of these way. Feelings, overwhelming feelings. You might have already experienced this as you're trying to observe the object. Now, Minna, this is what you say. This is a pali board. Then, then pali board. The kila kiwa ma by when ne pa when I'm when I use the word pali board. Don't be um, oh gosh, I did it wrong. No, you've not done anything wrong. This is. You know, it is like when you are going on a treacherous journey. It is expected that the road might not be smooth, right? This is one of those places when the shraddha arises in that manner. This shraddha needs to be balanced. Every meditator has to do it. 
right? This Shraddha needs to be balanced. Because when the Shraddha now arises, you might have already experienced this, the Shraddha overtakes Bhavana Karma Sthani the Nathvila. Shraddha is there, you're with the object, of course, but now it's more you're pondering on the Shraddha aspect, with Dharma, the Shraddha that arises towards the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha, and the object is now not clear. Right? At this moment, can anyone relate to this, what I'm telling you right now? Can you relate to it? Where you have an insight that occurs. Mm -hmm. And the Shraddha, the faith arises and through this faith, Yetanama, why couldn't I do this before? Why couldn't I experience this before? The Dhamma makes so much of sense. The Buddha's teachings have brought me so much of peace. Now these sorts of things. Shraddha, we not away hitin sitvili. Me voy sitvili avilati na the bhavana karna vastaviti. Ekyan ni me nikam ni me. Me Yamkis there, me Arumuna Tikin Nutta, Ana Pana Satya Kernutta, Vedana Pasana Vakernutta, Evogi, Shadhava Tekatirme, Adha Savilatir. Hm? Tienavad Okumala tendine, not everyone gets it, some do. Right? Others get something else. When the Shadha rises, now this is a disturbance. But as it arises, you watch the Shraddha element. You watch the Shraddha element, the faith, and you bring it to balance. Do you understand? You don't dismiss the faith. You don't dismiss the faith. You understand the faith and tone it down to this position, then at the Avasha Tharanta Pajkarna. It is like, imagine, in an old flare lamp, hmm? when the flare is too much, what do you do? You don't cut it. You just turn the knob so the flare goes down. Isn't it? In the same way, you don't cut the Shraddha. Why? You're cutting your own tail almost. What do you do? You acknowledge the Shraddha and you balance it to the occasion. Then, what is the next thing that could arise as you are observing? Virya, effort. <clears throat> effort. Shabdha, you balance with wisdom. Shabdha, you balance with wisdom. When you are thinking all of these things, let us say about the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha, you might think, oh, this is a good thing. But we know when we observe through our wisdom, we know, no, this is another Sankhara. This is again taking me back into another Sankhara, whether it be Kusala or Akusala. Hence, we use the wisdom to balance, to observe the Shraddha and to balance it to the moment. Then we samadhi at ativena. It, it supports the samadhi perfectly now. Then we have virya. When virya arises, you want to see everything. Now you are observing the breath. You're very um, charismatic today. You're feeling very electric. You're feeling very, very positive, right? So you're going into the meditation, into your seated position, and you are ready to conquer those enlightenment stages, right? So, <laughs> so you sit, you sit in contemplation, and you have... All of this energy, vibrant amounts of energy. Good thing, isn't it? However, when the energy is so keen, what happens? You become overly interested. Right? You are overly keen, which then brings about restlessness. Why? 
you're observing the breath, you are second, you're questioning yourself, you're doubting yourself. Am I observing this correctly? How can I do it better? Am I doing it the, it the best way possible? Isn't it? Uh, I think we've all gone, gone through these motions one way or the other because these are very much parts and parcel of our practice. This is the mind. If it is in your mind, it is a part of your practice. Right? No one can really say, even the Buddha did not say, if there is a part in your mind to hide it, no. If that part is there, you have to address it. Hold on. And addressing how? Through the Dhamma. Understanding the Dhamma context. So now it is not ugly anymore because it is no longer personal. It is a Dhamma. In this Dhamma, when, for example, again, virya in this case arises, the virya can cause your energy levels to be who overly curious about the subject, which leads to restlessness. How do we conquer this? You conquer restlessness with concentration. How? When the virya arises, you say, no, there is nothing for me to go search for. Everything that I need to see is right here. In this moment, within my grasp, there is nothing beyond this grasp. If it is beyond this grasp, beyond this experience, there is nothing. Isn't it? If it is not cognizable to the five sense doors, then it has it arisen. Shabdayak vinne ko madha, shabdayak vinne hauno hamanai. A sound is only a sound when it is heard. If it is not heard, then who heard the sound? A sight, a varna rupa, a, for example, a form, a visual object, is only a visual object when it is seen. If it was not seen, it was never an object. Hence, it never became a condition in that way. In that way. So when the virya arises in a very similar fashion, we alert our concentration sati into the moment and remind ourselves there is nothing to go seeking out there. Everything is here. Bringing your attention back into the present, back into the present. Adverting to the Dhammata of the moment through how now not discernment prajna vingnimi metana. When restlessness arises, you do not try to talk to it. You only talk to it at what moment when the Shraddha is there. Why? When Shraddha is there, Shraddha listens. Now, for example, your partners, your wives, your husbands might be telling you a lot of things that you should change in your life. However, you do not hear them. But when Hamduru says, when Hamduru says, then now it is something that touches you. By Hamduru pointed it out. But then, when there is always that Hamduru, there is always a partner by on the other side saying, I told you so. <laughs> But why do we listen to the harm? Why? The respect is there. When the respect, the softness of heart, anyone that you respect, your mother, your father, even an enemy that you respect will teach you something. Without that respect, no one can teach you anything. Hence the Buddha says, guard your Shraddha with all your life. Don't let anyone play with it. Why? Hitata podihari vitarakyak ati vunot minna making ati vedak naake na mulumahat sansara gamanam adhala venna me nivan gamanam paadu venna ida tiyena vaitana prati venna.
හෙන් සපියර මාමේ බාල සමාගමෝ සතන් සමාගමෝ හෝතු යාව නිබ්බහන පත්තියා කියලා කවදාවත් මේ මිත්‍යා දෘෂ්ටියේ ඇසුරු නොහවු වේවා ඕල් ඔෆ් දීස් ප්‍රාර්ථනාස් දැට් වී ඩූ ඇට් දි එන්ඩ් ඔෆ් ද ඩේ ඉට් රියලි කම්ස් ඩවුන් ටු දිස් ප්‍රසන්ට් මොමන්ට් හියර් ඇන් නව් වෙයා යු ආර් ඒබල් ටු ඩිසර්න් විත් ක්ලැරිටි අන්ඩර්ස්ටෑන්ඩ් හවු යු බැලන්ස් ද faculties when viriya and as a result restlessness occurs it is like a child who is throwing a tantrum what do you do you calm it down you calm it down how do you calm it down take a seat on the floor take deep breaths with the child remain calm what is that concentration concentration bringing it back bringing it back telling it there's nothing there's not a lot to worry about putting it at ease and then bringing it back to the object you see etna did you see the aloba adosa and amoha there aloba kiyala kiyanne naishkramya attarima so even when the mind was not behaving how you wanted it to behave you did not expect or you did not grieve punishment towards the mind why you atarya you let go you saw when the mind was not behaving maybe you were not able to see the object or the object was not clear however the situation is not perfect you're not your happiest however what is neck come letting go let go of that when you let go of that when you are in that moment with nekamma you are not holding you are just letting go it is like a little child who would let us say drop something on the floor you don't get mad and absolutely chaotic you know chaotic no you just it doesn't matter what more do you expect out of a child what more do you expect out of a monkey mind nekam the second one aloba adosa metta did you see the metta in that moment when you were understanding the mind there was metta loving kindness understand in this situation the mind is not calm enough or the mind is asking all these questions loving kindness understanding observing it not tackling it the moment it goes off the path or a way be starts behaving in ways that you don't see uh, understand even e vilad metta you see towards that person and then amoha prajna discernment prajna that understanding as you observe so the nekam as you observe there is no tantha there is letting go metta is the loving kindness aspect the the love the care that you have towards this moment this object this phenomena this sankhara and the third wisdom is discernment prajna prajna is that which understands huh when you see into a person's look into a person's eyes you're not judging the person you're not doing any of that but just that glance into that person's eyes you know that this person is in pain so you understand that pain you understand that this person is going through something so you treat this person with a little bit more sensitivity you don't treat the person with the same manner or expect the same things from this person why because you can see evident pain that is more like discernment understanding and loving kindness understanding and letting go works like three main cores in this engine fueling this moment so moment to moment when this let us say disturbances hindrances during those initial phases where you might feel disturbed or where you might feel difficulties in observing these are where your difficulties come through balanda pe budhaam ronge dharme 
කොච්චර ලස්සනට දේශනා කරලා තියෙන දෙයක්ද it is almost horrendous sometimes to imagine how people could misunderstand such a beautiful written out dhamma which is so clear to anyone who practices it as well then concentration and the final one we know is equanimity equanimity balances all the rest that is when there is a shabdha uh, indriya which is going off balance too much or too little when there is a virya issue where there is too much virya or too less virya when you would have a prajna discernment issue or a concentration issue with too much of concentration or too little concentration all of these four then metana hatra tiena wa neda shraddha um shraddha is balanced with prajna virya is balanced with sati and then now we are talking about upekka the last one this upekka is like the cohesion that holds all of these together this upekka is the equanimity of mind to balance itself upon an object e kiyanne mekata singhalen kiyena tata bhavaya kiyala tata bhavaya pali walin vachanayak thiyena tatra majjatta thavaya kiyala ha othukota increasing api kiyena equanimity of mind of the equanimous nature of the mind this is referring to the tata bhavaya which is the which is the when there is a object to be with this object absolutely balance with this object without ups and downs and just balance this is called the tatta bhava tatta bhava the tatra majjatta ta gati that is for example you have all experienced this it's just that the word might be unfamiliar to you it is when you are observing the anapana sati the anapana the breath and when the mind is so profoundly balanced upon the breath you are not controlling it there are no thought the breath is in breath out breath you are observing this with smooth flow balance isn't it balance okatai that is what you call tatra majjatta right now for example when the buddha because again we sat season when the buddha was the story of tanha rati raga right tanha rati raga so these were mara's daughters at the story goes but really these are the hindrances na yeah? these are the hindrances so when tanha rati raga mara's daughters came to seduce the buddha how did the buddha conquer tata bhav that is the equanimity towards observing these hindrances ha huh? so when the mind is with the object and when it is balanced the hindrances when they come up they are easily subdued why the mind the moment it reconnects to the object it can come into a tata bhav a balanced state when you enter this balanced state it is for example um we talk about something like this in work culture with reference to work flow when you get into a flow of work you try to minimize disturbances and when you fall into that rhythm you can get a lot of work done almost naturally flowing to enter into this flow state of work this is also a tata bhava a balance where the mind is absolutely balanced with this work that you are doing right this work that you are doing tata bhava in meditation in vipassana this tata bhava this true balance can only be there when there are aloba adosa amoha when these three rooted 
free roots are there for the consciousness, that is where you can have a tataba in Buddhism, in the Vipassana practice. The other tataba where it is known as Micha, why? Only because it doesn't take you towards enlightenment. Only the Samadhi Tathabhava guides you towards the quenching of the Sankhara. Quenching of the Sankhara. The lesser the Sankhara, the Tathabhava will help you to embrace the lessened Sankhara state. Which we work on through our daily practice through our contemplations, through the essence of Dhamma, through everything that works in our mind. So with each step we take, we make good progress because at this time, even these sorts of sankharas making sense to us is another condition to fulfill our artist journey ahead with far great perseverance. In our journey, we will come across many hindrances, some seen, some unseen. But for sure, there will be encumbrances and hindrances in our path. The Dhamma is so resilient to teach us the way forward and to also give us the guide to avoid these pitfalls. One great part of that avoidance of those pitfalls is to always be cautious, never cocky about what your capabilities are when it comes to the hindrances. The Buddha says the hindrances, when you give it a little bit of room, what does it try to do? It tries to move its whole body in, <laughs> which is something that we are all quite, a statement that we are all quite familiar with. In the same way, the hindrances are insidious. The hindrances are um, like home to us sometimes because this is a state that we have been so familiar with for so many years and we have been trained and molded in the same way to live life as well. So coming out of that process takes a lot of guts. It is not for the faint of heart. It takes a lot of guts to say no to 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 do to for example to do things differently, to go against the herd, to go to swim uh, swim up the stream is obviously always difficult. So with all of these aspirations of the Dhamma, of all, everything that we are studying, and with a great amount of gratitude to, of course, all the terrors who have brought this Dhamma to us, really, may, uh, we know that in Sri Lanka there was a time that we had no monks, right? Um, where the monks had to, the only way that the Tripitaka could be preserved is because is how is uh, the, the monks had to dress like lay people and uh, protect the tripitaka before it was uh, to keep it from getting destroyed hence we know in burma we have so a far vast amount of dhamma in comparison to the documents that we have in sri lanka because a lot of the Dhamma that we had in Sri Lanka was burnt by the Chola invaders and all these different wars that we had going on in Sri Lanka. That these, um, these immense documents about practice and Vipassana practice, all of that has been lost. A, a certain aspect of Theravada Buddhism, why they call it Theravada, is because these great Theras in our tradition, took the time to make note of all of these experiences. Now, these, I me terunvahan se mukadda me kata kiyan ne, me 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 vidyata me terunvahan se laage paudhila adda kiyam dharma teka tibi paudhila adda kiyam wala te idda kadadduna loku. With then what happened was the Tripitaka was taken, of course, by Bohara, by remembrance. Then 
the terrors they wrote down with the tripitaka the later they wrote down the meditation practices and sri lanka had a lot of different techniques right how to see uh, the breath how to go into jhana how to do these particular these are not these are all satipatthana but different approaches techniques then burume giyama thailante giyama mean they have a lot of different techniques that work that actually work which they have got from the terrors now sri lanka does not have that why because all of those documents and practices they were burnt only a very small amount remains so some of those sri lankan practices are prescribed and enshrined and protected in burma a lot of their techniques for example there is a very popular technique in burma called the candy meditation technique which focuses on forced breaths for example there are other techniques which focuses on other parts of the body to cultivate this awareness at the end of the day all of these techniques do the satipatthana practice that is the school of theravada right hence when we have this practice and we have these guides we use these guides and now we know we have the mahasi and then we have the pao techniques that we use as well to cultivate our further sort of access into these vipassana techniques so all with all of these dharma jnana the uh, position that comes to is of course the practice that we do independently individually ek itin karanne nathuwa itin amaru ඒක කරන්න නැහැ කියලා කියන්නේ යම් කිසි විදියකට ඉතින් අර සංසාර බය අඩුයි කියන එක තමයි සංසාර බය අඩුයි කියලා කියන්නේ ප්‍රඥාව අඩුයි කියන එක ප්‍රඥාව ඔතකොට අඩුයි කියලා කියන්නේ සති අඩුයි කියන එක ඔතකොට කොයින් හරි දැන් මේ ඔක්කොම ඉන්ටලෙක්ට් බිකොස් ඉෆ් යු ආ සතිය තියෙනවා නම් මෙන්න මේ දේවල් දකින්නවා යු නෝටිස් දීස් තින්ග්ස් සතිය නැති කෙනාට පේන්නේ නැහැ සතිය තියෙන කෙනාට පේනවා ආ නව් ෆෝ එක්සැම්පල් බිකොස් doctors they might be working with dead bodies every single day right certain doctors but yet because their yon samskara is not working in that manner they are regarding dealing with these dead bodies or illness or disease or whatever these sufferings that might be they dealing it with it in a different manner hence the viraga does not come nivana tavasha viragaya hata ganne nahi hata ganne nahi ඒත් එක්ක අපිට මේ භාවනාවත් එක්ක දැන් මේ වෙසක් කාලෙත් දැන් අපි පව් වෙලා අපිට මේ අවුරුද්දේ මේ ජීවිත කාලෙම මේ අවුරුද්දේ දවසක් දවසක් පාස මේ වී බි ඒබල් ටු ගාන ද ස්ට්‍රෙන්ත් ది කරේජ් ටු බිකම් නෝබල්ස් ටු වර්ක් ලයික් නෝබල්ස් ටු බි ඉන්ස්පයර්ඩ් බයි ද නෝබල්ස් and to make every necessary step forward even a little tiny bit we are not competing with anyone else we are competing only with ourselves even with a little step let us make sure that we are taking that step forward and in that journey all my blessings to all of you and i trust that i have all of your blessings as well so um, all our blessings are there with you and especially today <laughs> very much me um හරි එනම් ඔක්කොමලාට අද තෙරුවන් සරණයි ඉතින් අද මාගේ උපන්දින දවසට උපන්දින දවසෙත් මුනේ හින්ද අපි එනම් අපි through all the dhamma teachings and learnings that we have done over the past may we share all these merits with uh, all the departed relatives all friends family close beings known unknown seen unseen devas pisachas all beings from the higher realms and the lower realms all being may all their lives be touched by the power of all the dhamma that we cultivate practice teach and endeavor to embody इदम मे ज्ञाती नंगो तो सुखिता हंतु ज्ञातयो 
इदम मे ज्ञाती नो तो सुखिता हम तो ज्ञात इदम मे ज्ञाती नो तो सुखिता हम तो ज्ञात आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मठा देवा महिंदिखा पुण्यंथमोदि चिरन्रकु शासन आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मठा देवा महिंदिखा पुण्यंथमोदि चिरन्रकु देशन आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मठा देवा महिंदिखा पुण्यंथमोदि चिरन्रकु सदाति साधु 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 महान सेवा